Hey, my name is Bill. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about what's happening on the React Hook Form version 7. A um, bit of preview or what we try to bring into the table into the next major version. So without further delay, uh, let's get into some of the goals. Um, so we've been focusing on developer experience from the very first version of uh, Hook Form. So the next version, uh, we're going to be even focused further on try to providing strictly typed form to every user who's using TypeScript. We're going to reduce the package size, um, somehow improve performance, also making the library a bit more uh, simpler and, and being more consistent uh, from an API point of view. And we also drop I11. So let me dive into each individual topic a little bit deeper. Uh, this is going to be a, a short kind of talk. Um, just for the sake, of, because it's just a preview, we we haven't kind of uh, completely locked down in IP uh, API and, and everything around the library. Anyway, first thing we'd like to talk about is strictly type, and and uh, the the fact is we actually always have this vision to build something that is strictly typed uh, for people who are using TypeScript. We actually have a component called strictly typed, which is uh, built by Kotaro. Um, this library is actually under the the entire hook form repo right now. You can use it right now, uh, but I think there is a certain um, limitation. Uh, things like it's kind of using array uh, index to lock down the type, and it's just kind of not that neat from uh, DX point of view. But feel free to check it out. It's it's actually working. But I think we want to move into something better on the next major version. Um, so now let's have a look at the most uh, impactful API we're probably going to be uh, encounter with with the next major version. We all know on version six, this is how we register an input. Uh, we basically register the input reference itself, then we reading the input name. Hence, we can actually pr produce uh, an input value and attach event listener. Uh, to all the inputs, subscribing to them, validating them, etc. Uh, this works great for version six. However, for us to breaking the gap, uh, to I mean, to closing the gap between uh, strictly typed with 4.1 uh, TypeScript supported with string template ritual, uh, we can't do this anymore because we need to turn that into a function where we can actually grab the main and, and doing the type check. Although there is some trade-off is going to happen when we actually building like external uh, component, where these days right now you can easily just forward the ref, and then you can just register everything works. Which version seven, it might be a little bit harder, but it came with the advantage that we can we can assure what the input name is going to be when we actually run the register function. So the syntax is going to be slightly changed from ref equal regist to spread operator where we invoke regist function and we can so we can type check the the, the input name but the but behind the me mechanism will be still the same we're getting a ref we do a callback and then we register input and so far so on and the result is we're gonna be able to actually uh, type checking for deep nested object uh, such as in this example, uh, which in the current version, it's it's kind of impossible because uh, there is no way you can actually get in the name out of this regist. Uh, certainly, because the name attributes is on input itself. So moving on with this model, I think we can we can start uh, slowly adapting a strictly type for all inputs on the next major version. So that's one kind of major breaking change we're going to bring into version 7 but it comes with a, a huge pro uh, in terms of typely checked. Now next thing like uh, I also emphasize a lot which is try to reduce the package size a little bit more and more over the time. So the good news about version 7 is we, uh, we reduced about 10%. I mean this number can skew a little bit uh, once we release the final version. But um, 
it's gonna be roughly around that reduced about ten percent. I think this is this thing always meant a lot to me because uh, I want to produce something that's as tiny as possible, uh, so so your app can bootstrap quicker. Uh, and also, you know, a smaller package size means less logic to run inside as well. So you make your uh, application a bit more performant as well as a bonus. So package, package size is going to be better for the next version. Now let's talk about performance. Um, that's kind of where hook form is getting uh, popular these days because we focus a lot about performance and how we can del deliver the best user experience um, while you know the, you, you're playing with the form. It's everything is about smooth. So we kind of enhance that even further with the next version. We're introducing a new hook called use form state. What this allowed us to do is we can actually subscribe to individual form state updates. Uh, and that means uh, components like controller or use controller can completely isolate that re-render uh, without impacting your entire application or impacting your entire form. Uh, you, you have the su subscription model where, uh, say for example, if a dirty field check uh, updated, if you're not subscribing to that um, form state, uh, then, then your entire component tree would not be re-rendered, except that little component uh, that you actually subscribe will get re-rendered. So the second uh, um, hook that we improve a lot is user field rate. Uh, I know we have a, a, quite a bit of a, um, difficulty and frustration from the community when people are using Fuel Ray uh, because, purely because the reason when I built the first version of uh, React Hook 4, I didn't consider uh, Fuel Ray that, I guess, I did deeply. And the model of building the hook is kind of reversed. Uh, I built the hook form first and then I can't move into Fuel Ray. So that bumped into a lot of design limitation and, and things just not work as well as I expected it. So with this new version, I get the opportunity to completely redesign the data structure and, and just work uh, the correct way from user field array towards uh, user form. So expect uh, the performance is going to be better, the behavior is going to be better, uh, the expectation uh, is going to be better as well when you're using with API such as watch and use watch. Also, uh, focus management also being improved on user view array. Now you can uh, targeting any inputs as long as they are exposing ref correctly. Uh, you can basically say if you append, you can append to any particular input that you would like to use it to be focused on. So that, that become a lot flexible in terms of uh, focus management. Uh, the last uh, hook that we improve is basically the watch uh, mechanism. Uh, the, the watch is being getting better, um, and some of the again some of the design limitation that associated with user fuel array has been eliminated. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So that's about performance. Now simplicity and consistency is it's very very important to any type of library. And, and certainly hook form play a major role on this to make that as easy as possible for everyone. However, there are some API that they kind of lack of consistency and that, that's kind of my fault when I uh, building new features. So this time we kind of completely iron it out. Uh, we try to follow two patterns. Uh, one is uh, you know, name, value, and options. Uh, and the second one would be name, array of names and options. Try to stick around with this API design pattern so you feel much more comfortable when you're picking up a new API, new API. And they will be very, very similar in terms of uh, each arguments uh, within the API. And form state also, whoops, uh, form state has also been kind of unwritten down as well. Uh, that was one of the regret that I made a version 6. Then I accidentally forgot to change one of the name and one of the guy pop up and it goes like hey, hey, hey this is not consistent so that's being improved uh, as well so it's good now next thing uh, it's hook form resolver uh, for those people using schema validation uh, you guys wouldn't be would be pretty familiar with this 
And this time with Jerus's help, uh, a French developer which joined the team, and this time he's making a huge improvement on the resolver thing. So, so huge thanks to him. And first thing we improved uh, the module expo. Uh, I know it's pretty difficult because we, we, we're not just supporting like Yup, we're supporting so uh, Superstract, uh, Vest, and Joy. So there's a lot of things we support. So having the module expo correctly, it, it's crucial. Uh, and certainly that's not my expertise. And Jura's actually fulfilled the gap uh, now. Um, so we can have really awesome module exports from the library. Uh, second thing, we have asynchronous and synchronous uh, options for the validation now. Uh, previously, we didn't have that option. So that was one of the feature requests. Uh, we got that working now. The last one is probably the most important one that kind of give you much more flexibility uh, in terms of how do you uh, building uh, a custom resolver or you want to you know write extra logic uh, layer uh, inside of resolver and now it's possible because we actually supply a lot of more information about uh, what's happening within the hook form things like the name that we actually are validating right now and, and fields information which you can actually get in the ref uh, and potentially focus on any input if you want. So you you get the you get the freedom on you know how do you actually manage the uh, the arrow the value and also the focus management too. So that's pretty good. Now some sad news that I eleven is going to be dropped um, because uh, as we all know this year Microsoft is going to stop the support anyhow. And for us to moving into the future, we really want to actually uh, throw away this burden that they're making uh, another version of IE11. But if you're panicking, you can still continue using version 6 and I'll be still maintaining that. Uh, so don't panic, but for whoever uh, or, or the new user picked up uh, version 7, uh, we're going to drop IE11. So by 11. Okay, now let me do a, a really quick demo. Um, again, this is not a finalized API. Uh, the RFC is still going. Um, the V7 is still under development, I would say. Um, there's still going to be a lot of time before the official one gets released. I still got to spend a lot of time with the documentation, uh, etc. Anyway, let's, tri let's quickly try the version 7. Now I have a really really simple form. As you can see, this is pretty standard. Um, we are just using um, hook forms template. So I have a, a type declaration on the top. Now notice I'm trying to using nested it um, to register import without throwing uh, a type error. Right now uh, on version seven, it's basically any. You can you can put any name. It doesn't throw any uh, type error. So there's a version seven. Um, you see, uh, voila. Uh, this kind of you know TypeScript support for string template ritual is actually really, really, really good for uh, for building forms. And we're using spread operator X, you can see in this example, like that. Um, so that's good. Safely, uh, you know, strictly type check, and everything should work. And we're getting value out of the good details. Beautiful. And the next one I'm going to show uh, is Fiora Ray. I'm not going to type this all out because I want to make this uh, pretty short. So I, I previously prepared a, a test component. And I'm just going to copy paste that in here. Uh, kind of just demonstrate like what's happening in Fiora Ray. So okay, like typical Fiora Ray, you can click and append. Yeah, you get a new item out of it. Uh, ooh, I forgot to change that to type button because otherwise you will do some midlife here. Cool. Okay, so a couple things uh, in here. First, um, now we have a strictly type support. Uh, so you can, if you make a mistake like that, uh, first name is not actually in the type definition, we throw an error, so you, you correct that. Uh, the form is, uh, the, the, the input name is valid again. And so does like some of the, the attributes, like if you put like first name one, that doesn't exist in definition. Uh, and they'll throw errors so, so this, that, that just show off some of the TypeScript support. Uh, the other thing is, I think, uh, for those that are using uh, hook form version 6 uh, and previous version, you will all know that uh, when you watch uh, a few array, you actually have to specify the name, uh, which is a bit annoying, but 
you know, that's one of the design limitations with version 6. And uh, with version 7, uh, you no longer have that problem. Uh, let me just quickly uh, console log and watch the entire form. Uh, we can just, you know, change the name and then we click, uh, let's click this, let's click append and we should be getting the latest uh, fuel array item as well. So there's a lot of like little uh, quality of life improvement over version 7. That's something, uh, you know, you know, uh, the feedback been gathering over almost two years to, to make this kind of happening. Uh, so version 7 is, I'm, I'm personally, I'm pretty excited about it, but I don't want to over promise and, and, and not delivering. Uh, but I think it's going to be a better version of the overall hook form. Okay, that's that's the demo. And the last one slide is, please uh, join the discussion on uh, React Hook Form, where I have a version 7 RFC down there. And I mean, we, we, we're pretty open. It, this, is, this is completely community driven. So feel free to, to give your options and, and you know feedback whether it's doesn't matter whether you hate it or you like it. Just just say it out, and we we can. I'm I'm there to to reply and discuss, and we can work out a better solution to make our you know building life or form a lot better. And there are people that can you can talk individually as well, like myself, and you can also talk to Jervis uh, around the resolver if you have any kind of you know you got this really good idea for resolver. Uh, we still got time kind of to discuss and add that in. We also have Discord channel. Uh, I, I Right now it's kind of, I'm pretty busy right now, uh, but I do jump on there every now and then, kind of asking, uh, answer questions and, and see what people um, thought about, you know, uh, hook form in general. Cool, uh, thank you. I'm gonna wrap this up. Hopefully it's not too long. Uh, so you can start using a real hook form version seven right now, it's in alpha. Uh, I expect we're going to have a beta version uh, very soon as well. We've still got a couple of things to iron out before we release in beta. And then it's probably going to be a um, couple changes around beta before we go into RC. So future looks good um, and hope um, more people will be enjoying using React Hook form. And I, ho I hope I will solve more people problems around form as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll catch you later.